Welcome back to the MMA Report Live right here on RadioInfluence.com. Right now we are joined by a man that's going to be fighting here at the end of the month, Bellator 143. It is Ryan Couture who's going to be taking on Nick Gonzalez. And, of course, you can see this as a part of the preliminary card on Spike.com. Ryan, appreciate the time. You know, Ryan, when people think, when they hear the name Ryan Couture, they think, well, that's the son of Randy Couture. If you had your wish, what would you like people to think when they hear your name? Um, I don't know. I'm not particularly bothered by what they're thinking currently, so I never really spent a lot of time thinking about it. Um, you know, I feel like every time out, I, I do my best to, to try and give them something beyond that to know about me and, and try and show them something or show them what I'm capable of and give them a reason to think about me as more than just Randy's kid. But I think that's probably always going to be the first thing that comes to mind. Do you ever think that there will come a point where you kind of – you get out of that shadow or you just feel like, you know, Hey, I, I, I just know it's going to be there and, and just embrace it. Yeah. I, I pretty much, uh, expect that it's always going to be there. Uh, it, it's, that's a big ass shadow to be under. So, um, uh, I don't have any problem with it. It, it doesn't bother me. I, I'm just out here, uh, trying to do the best I can to, to, to achieve my goals as a fighter. And, and, uh, and the rest is, is sort of background noise. You've won four in a row here since since your exit from the UFC, all of them coming by submission. Overall, how would you grade your performance in, in your last four fights, and and how have you grown as a mixed martial artist after losing those two fights? Uh, I'm very happy with how the last four fights have gone. I, I think uh, I've been able to come out and, and execute my game plan and, and uh, just keep sharpening those tools every time out and, and getting better at what I do. Uh, I, I think... Uh, the, those two two losses were a good learning experience and, and kind of forced me back to the drawing board to make some adjustments in training. And uh, I think I've really been able to refocus on playing to my strengths and, and always uh, just trying to sort of funnel that fight into the areas where I'm most comfortable and most effective, and, and it's been working. So I'm looking forward to continuing to do that. Has there been anything in particular that you can uh, attribute the success to? Is it just simply – the evolution of your game and, and learning what you need to do in the cage. I mean, is there any big keys that you've really been able to use in, in your past couple of training camps that ha- have taken you to, to win your last four fights by submission? Um, I think just refocusing in training. We had some, uh, some personnel changes over at the gym. So uh, I've got now uh, coach Flowers uh, and coach Dennis Davis and uh, Eric Nixick all helping me out. And, and those guys are all really, uh, good about refocusing me every time they catch me, you know, drifting off and trying to goof around and pretend I'm a kickboxer or, or, you know, not sticking to sticking to where I'm best. They're, they're good at, at kind of reminding me and, and snapping me back out of it and, and refocusing me on, on uh, what my most effective tools are. So it's not to say that we're not learning anything new, but, but everything always ties back in and relates back to kind of my A game and, and, uh, I think that that uh, renewed focus on on my strength has has really been what's carried me through and and uh, and got me to where I'm at. Looking at your opponent here, Nick Gonzalez, eighteen and twelve with one no contest, according to Sure Dog, um, Fight Finder. This is gonna be his first fight since 2013. When uh, this fight gets approached to you, how how were you uh, a little bit surprised to uh, see that this was the opponent being offered? Uh, yeah, it was a little bit. Um, we had a couple other uh, possible opponents uh, that were a little more kind of up and coming or had a little more impressive record uh, that just fell through for I'm not sure for what reason, but uh, by the time we were finally able to nail this down, I was just glad to have a fight at all. Um, and then the more I've uh, studied up on Nick, he's he's a tough dude. I can't uh, I can't take him lightly just because the numbers don't look as pretty on paper. Um, he, he's he's dangerous and. If I don't go out there and fight my best, uh, then he's going to make me look bad. So, in some ways, that's almost more pressure and more stress going into a fight, knowing that, you know, knowing what people will say if it doesn't go well, and, and knowing that he's a perfectly capable opponent and, and someone that I have to fight with respect. Uh, so, in some ways, that adds to the pressure. But I'm just really excited to be back in action. It's been uh, six months since my last fight, and, and, and I'm just eager to get back in there and, and, uh, and, and get the job done. What are some of the biggest challenges that Nick brings to the cage? Uh, he, he's 
very, very durable. He, he keeps coming forward damn near no matter what you hit him with, and, and he can deliver a punch of his own. He's, he's got pretty solid hands, and, and if I uh, if I give him a target, he's, he's going he's gonna to ring my belt. So I just uh, I think i got to keep the pressure on him and, and force the fight where I'm strongest, which is into the clinch and onto the ground. So I'm going to be looking to, looking to apply my game and, and kind of neutralize his. Was going through your Twitter timeline and saw you recently had a birthday. Happy birthday, by the way! Uh, I got to ask you, how difficult is it to have your birthday while you're preparing for a camp and making sure your weight is is where it needs to be and that you're not going to get sidetracked by maybe uh, you know? I saw your birthday cake was was a cage and it and had the Bellator logo in it. How do you make sure that you got to kind of say, "Hey, I can really celebrate my birthday come September 26." I might not have done the best job of that this year, uh, but uh, no, we, we uh, you know, I, I was able to relax and, and have a little bit of a good time and celebrate a little bit without going crazy and, and uh, you know, definitely didn't affect the training cycle. I was still there for all my workouts and, and still pushing hard at the gym, so um, I didn't mind making up uh, a few extra calories with a little bit of extra cardio down the line, so uh, it, it was good. It's always kind of a bummer knowing that that you can't really, uh, you know, blow it out to celebrate a birthday, but also you're turning 33. It's not like there's a big milestone or anything. So uh, definitely fight camp's more important, and, and, and that makes it easy. Yeah, I turned 34 this week, so I, I know what you mean in terms of that and when it comes to the numbers. But you talk about uh, motiv- motivation, Air Fire's motivation, is maybe one of the biggest motivating factors. Something you kind of mentioned here earlier is the fact that, hey, you, you, you everyone isn't going to expect you to win this fight, and you don't want it to be to where kind of maybe people are, are making jokes about you if you're unable to get the victory. Is that the biggest motivation in this fight, or is there other motivating factors that you have currently? I mean, the biggest motivation for me is I want to win and keep moving up the ladder and, you know, taking a loss here would significantly set back my chances of ever getting into that title picture. So that's, that's my, my motivation long-term, but, but obviously it, it doesn't hurt uh, motivation wise knowing that there's plenty of people out there looking, looking for a reason to say that I suck or say that I'm not as good as my dad was or any of that nonsense uh, that, that people like to talk. Uh, you know, that, that's kind of, silly motivation all the time but the, the big picture stuff is that you know to get where i want to be i have to win this fight any uh big uh phrases you're using in the gym to prepare for this fight is there any bulletin board material that you have up to kind of maybe uh make you think about every day as you prepare for nick gonzalez uh no i, I got nothing for you i'm no fun for a sound bite like that um you know, we're just in there working hard coaches coaches in my ear telling me uh telling me what the game plan is and, and, uh, and I'm doing my best to, to train myself to stick to that. So uh, I think, I guess, uh, probably key word in, in the approach to, to this matchup and, and to most matchups that I'll have is, is just pressure. I got to, I got to keep the pressure on and, and uh, you know, not, uh, not be too willing to back up and get ground. I need to be coming forward and, and uh, working my way into, into my comfort zone and the clinch and, and on the ground. Is that one maybe one of the major lessons you learned in, in your defeats? Is that you know if you're not being the pressure fighter, you're just not going to have the success that you you normally would have. Yeah, when I go back and look at and look at film of, of my fights when I lost, I'm on my best. Uh, uh, you know, I'm having my most successful moments when I'm coming forward and, and applying that pressure and and, uh, and kind of grinding on guys. And, and uh, when uh, when I've not done that, things have not turned out great for me. So. So that's been a big focus since uh, since those two losses has been fixing that, showing up that hole in my game. And of course, this fight against Nick Gonzalez is going to take place here at the end of the month, Bellator 143 in South Texas. Ryan, appreciate time and good luck in the fight. Thank you, I appreciate it.